Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various aspects of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. Now, one thing that is very important here to consider that please subscribe to our channel if you are new to this channel and also don't forget to share the videos in your circles with your acquaintances for the better outreach. Now, in today's session, we are going to learn about the population geography and one of the very important dimension of population that is social capital. So what is the concept of social capital and how we can look into the population as a social capital and why it becomes really important in today's world. This is what we are going to discuss in today's session. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss the concept of population as a social capital. But before we go ahead, understanding population as a social capital, let's figure out the concept of social capital itself first. So what is social capital? In simple ways, social capital is the networks of relationship. Now this is the first thing that we need to keep into our mind. Networking, network of people among them who live and work in a particular society. And what happens because of these networks? They enable themselves. This is an enabling factor which talks about functioning of society in an effective manner, right? For a smooth functioning, for a peaceful living, right? For a progressive living, social capital is very important, right? So if you look into this population outcomes model, what do you see? We see that human capital alongside the physical capital converts into social capital and which is very important to give rise to social cohesion, right? And then further we get the outcomes from that, right? That is what we say is the population dividend, demographic dividend, right? So now let's elaborate the concept of social capital furthermore and understand its uses as the concept which is related in population geography. So how population can be understood as a social capital? So the term social capital was not commonly used before 1890s. Right? So the end of 19th century saw the intermittent uses of this concept and then two people are very important here. John Dewey who was American philosopher, psychologist and educational reformer gave this concept a new dimension and used this word social capital in his work The School and Society in 1899. Now the same year when Davis gave his geographical cycle of erosion theory. So that's when this was popularized but it was not clearly defined. So where did the definition come from? So from the works of L.J. Hannifin in 1916, right? So L.J. Hannifin in 1916 used this word social capital in one of the first occurrences that is reference to social cohesion and personal investment in community, right? And how did we know this? We know this from another work by Robert Putnam who worked in his book that is Bowling Alone in 2000 and gave references and credits to this great scholar Hannifin in year 2000. So that's how this concept travels from 19th century to 20th century to 21st century, right? So in 1920, Hannifin published the book called Social Capital itself where it was formally described and understood. Right now, when we look further, what is social capital and its understanding? It has a basic understanding of being effective in terms of what social functioning. So effective functioning of social groups through interpersonal relationships, shared sense of responsibility and identity, shared understanding, shared norms, shared values, trust, cooperation, reciprocity. If you look into these words, what does it say? It's not about singularity. It's not about personal. Right? It's more about community. It's about more social cohesion and shared ideas, values, identities, norms and trust. Right? So if you observe, this is where in this flow diagram you can observe the various dimensions or various aspects of social capital. So networking, belongingness, safety, reciprocity, participation, power, then values led living and diversity. All these things make up the concept of social capital. Right? So social capital is in simple way what? It's a measure of the value of resources both tangible as well as intangible resources. So if you want to look into the tangible and intangible resources of the society, then we need to understand the concept of social capital. Right? Because it integrates both the aspects, the 
private property, public spaces, as well as the human capital, people, their behavior, their value systems, their norms, all these things as a resource for the society. So social capital in simple way is what? It's a resource for ourselves that we create through our cohesion, that we create through our networking, right? So further, there is something called a livelihood framework. Now, why I'm talking about livelihood framework suddenly here? Because in livelihood framework given by UK Department for International Development, UK's DFID, there are several capitals being talked about. That these capitals are the dimensions which we need to take care of if you want to have a sustainable livelihood for the society. Right? And livelihood is very important characteristics of population. Right? In population geography, we understand livelihood. So for livelihood security as well, not just the natural human and financial and physical capital, but social capital is very, very important. Right? So they define social capital as two kinds of connections. One is called vertical connections. Vertical connections in simple way is connecting with people who are in the ladder above you in society with respect to position, power, access to resources. And the second is connecting people at your own level, right? People who share the same sense of identity, same sense of place as you share, right? So that's called a horizontal connections. So if you build both the connections well, it means you are part of the social capital. That's how need to be understood. So what we observe like human capital, social capital has an intrinsic value, right? Not external, but internal value, engraved value, good social capital and good social relationships simply means that they are end in themselves, right? They are themselves complete, right? So this is where we need to understand that for sustainable livelihood also, social capital becomes really important. Then further, if you look into this flow diagram, it gives us the various kinds of indicators that how in simple ways, in what actions we can understand what social capital is. So if you observe social capital has group characteristics, generalized norms, togetherness, everyday sociability, then you have neighborhood characteristics, then you have volunteerism, trust, right? So all these things are very important for a society to make it a social capital. Unless we make this cohesion, integration, interrelational aspects, this is not a social capital, right? So what we get from one more definition, networks together with shared norms, values and understandings that facilitate the key word here, the catch word here that facilitates the operation within or among groups. And for facilitation of this important norms, values and understandings, integration, right? This is very important. And unless this happens, a country cannot progress, right? So what we observe here further that social capital is an umbrella concept, which involves three important concepts within it. One is the concept of bonding. Next is the concept of bridging. And third is the concept of linkages. So bonds, bridges and linkages are what people need to make with their own community and also people who are above them in hierarchy, maybe socially, economically, position, power wise, and also in their own level, right? So this is important. Now further, there is another flow diagram that gives us a very interesting insight into what is the high social capital or low social capital and how it can be understood, how it is created. So understand experience of working together. And if you have a good experience of working together, you'll have a good reputation. Or if you have a bad experience, so it will be bad reputation. So positive side and negative side. Further from good reputation, expectations, trust, willingness to cooperate will be built. And if it is in good way, so it will give you good trust or it will give you a mistrust or a bad trust. That is again positive and negative dimensions. Then further, a generalized trust in other people, in other society will give you a high social capital, great amount of interconnectedness, right? Which is very strong society. But if it is negative, it will give, give us a low social capital, right? So this is a very interesting takeover, positive social capital and its dimensions and negative social capital as well, right? So it could be used as well as misused. Right? People could be integrated as well as people could be divided in a society. Right? That's how we understand it. So now population as a social capital when we study in population geography, the first thing is that never entire population of a country of a society can be considered as a social capital. Why? Because of lack of interconnectedness, lack of networks, because they are regionally divided, division lines on the basis of religion, caste and several others. 
right so if you have divisions in the society we are failing to make it as a social capital right so population as a whole may not always be social capital right so what we need to take care of size of the country diversity of its population demographic attributes and cohesion of regional groups into single unit if this is in a proper state it means the entire country can be a social capital right then further with increase in size and diversity of population what happens the exercise of nurturing a constructive social capital becomes difficult and more difficult right to bring all the people together in a single umbrella it's very difficult right so centrifugal forces forces that move out rather than come in right the parochial mindsets the interests their vested interests of people self interest selfishness of people are often the biggest hurdles right so what happens they inhibit the various social capital formation and what are those factors how we can understand lack of literacy occupation dependency ratio gender bias all these things are the hurdles these inhibit the creation of social capital that's why we keep saying that if you are working on this if this is improving in the country the country will have a greater social capital right that's where population will become the social capital so through macro integration of micro level social capital it's important that the entire country could be achieving the social capital thought process right so now what are the benefits out of it so benefits could be found in health sector in terms of prevention of crime and violence in education environment water use sanitation economic development all these things that we learn as good things for social well being that's where the concept of social capital is really important right so if you have a good amount of social capital these dimensions will really improve right so social capital has an implication for effect of trade migration economic reforms regional integration and new technologies also security right so safety security all these things could be ensured if you have a greater amount of cohesiveness among people so what you observe the concept of social capital because it's a little abstract it's a little vague concept there is no proper measurement no proper definition that we could project right because it has subjectivity many people do not understand it's poorly defined but there is a important underlying factor that it needs a consideration it needs more understanding and awareness because this is where our society will be free from marginalization it's a growing concern right so social capital is the need of the hour if you are not able to create social capital then in future will not be able to reap the demographic dividend we keep saying that india is a youth country right country of billions and so huge population which is from 18 to 35 years of age a young country but what about the social capital is the entire country youth united together or divided that's why social capital is important and that's why in population geography we talk about the social dimension of population as social capital right so if we want a better future a sustainable future we keep talking about sdg sustainable development goals right for that social cohesion integration networking and people living peacefully with shared values norms identities trusting each other that kind of society is what we need to build that's why we we'll say that entire country is now a social capital otherwise it's in parts it's in regions it's in locales it's not at the country level that's why we see that population has a huge potential to become social capital unless all the factors are given in a positive outset positive mindset right so that's important to learn here so now when we have discussed in details the various aspects of population geography population as a social capital and several other concepts in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of geography so if you have not watched the various other topics on geography please go to the playlist and look into the various aspects various videos which we have already covered so in the next session we are going to look forward to more new concepts so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the videos with others as well